Here we're going to take a look at genetically modified organisms, or if you're cool, you'll say the GMOs. So if you type in GMOs in Google, you'll get all kinds of examples of genetically modified organisms. How are organisms genetically modified? I talked about in a previous video how we use enzymes like DNA ligase and restriction endonucleases, which are little mini scissors to basically cut the DNA. And because all living things have the same genetic code, we call it universal, we can easily transfer genes in between uh, different organisms. And so here we're going to look at two specific examples really quickly. There are many others that you can take a look at, but be prepared to talk about two of them. Probably the most famous example is Bt maize, maize as in corn, and Bt as in a type of toxin. It's Bt toxin produced by a particular type of bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis. And here's a picture of some of the Bt spores that are actually produced. So what happens is we actually genetically modify the corn by inserting a gene from bacteria into the corn, and then the corn actually transcribes and translates that gene, that Bt toxin gene, and produces this toxin, which is poisonous to particular pests. So we're aiming to kill all these things that are eating the crops, and we don't want them to eat the crops because it makes the farmers angry, lowers their crop yield, they make less money, we produce less food, basically. So that is one specific use of genetically modified organisms. Now, we're going to talk later about a few of the positive things that come from that and some of the negative consequences as a result of using Bt corn, Bt toxin, Bt maize specifically. Another example you can know about is factor 9, factor Roman numeral IX. Factor 9 is a protein that's important in blood clotting people who are hemophilic. Well, there's different types of hemophilia, but one of them is due to this absence of factor nine. A mutation in that particular person doesn't allow them pr to produce factor nine properly. What we can do is we can manufacture that for them outside of their body using genetically modified sheep and their milk specifically. So these sheep have been genetically modified, probably at the embryo level, so that their milk actually produces an additional protein. And that additional protein is actually factor 9. So the gene that produces this particular protein has been isolated from some specific place, probably a human cell, and then we've taken that, inserted it into this sheep, and now through transcription and translation, that protein gets actually produced inside the sheep milk. Then, of course, we have to take the milk and clean it up, purify it, do all kinds of things to make sure it's safe for human use. And then once it's purified, it probably gets stored up by pharmaceutical companies and then sold to people who need this to help them stay alive. And so these are two specific examples. Let's look at some positives and negatives um, about using specifically Bt maize. So Bt maize, obviously, if we do that, uh, you can save some corn, higher crop yields, less use of insecticide sprays because the Bt toxin is kind of acting like an, ex an insecticide already that's built into the corn. You don't have to put extra spray ins ins insecticides onto the actual corn crops. Money is saved. If a farmer knows that a particular percentage of his crop yield is going to disappear every year due to pests, he's going to have to plan and grow more, use more land, basically. If he knows that this Bt toxin can help to maximize the crop by minimizing the pests, then maybe less land can be used and some of that land can actually be used for other purposes. This is both a positive and a negative, this third point down here. The corn crops are also going to be fertilizing each other naturally through pollination and everything uh, related to crop propagation. What can happen here is that the genetically modified crop can produce pollen and actually spread this trait to other crops that are not genetically modified, which could be a good thing that would save you money on how many crops you have to actually genetically modify. But if you don't want your crops to be genetically modified, then it's very difficult to stop this pollen from reaching other plots of land or other farmer's land, especially if they're promising that their products are not genetically modified. So they may not have intentionally done that, but the pollen may have spread to that particular place. And there may be evidence to suggest that the Bt toxin could be poisonous to humans and other animals that eat the corn. They could be harmed by the toxin or the DNA could be taken up um, into their genomes as well. 
there's an issue with possibly affecting the natural order of corn mating. And one more thing is that some insects that are not pests could actually be killed. So there might be some actually helpful insects that are eating these corn borers, kind of a natural food web, food chain type insecticide system that exists, but you might be harming those particular pests as well too. For each one of these genetically modified organisms, you can probably do some research and find some benefits and some drawbacks as well too. But try to make sure that everything is researched really well. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there. There are a lot of people that are against genetically modified organisms just because. And there are a lot of them, a lot of people who are supporting genetically modified organisms thinking that they can solve a lot of problems but may not have looked at all the possible outcomes, the possible negative outcomes. So make sure what you look at is actually a real genetically modified organism. There's a lot of people who like to use Photoshop out there too. So watch out for that, because I know I've been fooled in the past as well with things like alligator man, dog-faced human, things like that. Or they might have just been my friends on Facebook. Anyways, hope you understand and can use these some of these examples to help you understand genetically modified organisms.